We are thrilled. And that is, you know what, that's the royal we. I'll say that, uh, all of us here, uh, but and the royal we. Could not be more happy to have the head coach of the New York Jets on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line. It's been too long since I've spoken to Robert Sala, and that long, length of time ends right now. How are you, Coach Sala? I'm doing great, man. I, I guess we got to win more games to get on the show a little bit. Oh, <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> that is so not true, Robert. That is that is an untruth. That is an untruth. I, uh, look, uh, I, I'm, um, I think I speak for the fan base when I say I'm genuinely jacked. Uh, I mean, I just, I, I'm trying to remain composed, to be quite frank with you. I wonder how you're feeling about what's going on. There. You know, um, there's a lot of excitement. Um, I feel like this is the youngest, uh, a team that the, the the Jets have had in a while that's had so much promise and 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 an actual chance to to grow together. So it's exciting. It's an, it's, a, it's an exciting time to be a Jet. It's, it's an exciting time to be a fan, in my opinion. So how do you gel that? How do you harness that youth and talent in a league that you know feasts on that? If it's not potentially uh, placed on the field. In, in a way, or it, it you could be taken advantage of with that youth and talent, coach. You know that inside and out. How do you harness that? Well, yeah, for for sure. Like um, like, like any any young person in a in a in a field, right? You, you're going to have your learning experiences. You're going to go through your bumps, your bruises. But um, the the objective of this whole youth movement is to get these guys as much playing time as possible, so they get scarred like a veteran while they have youthful legs. Um, and if you could get them thinking and playing like a veteran while they're still running what they did at the Combine, then you have a chance to be a very explosive roster. So uh, does it hurt to watch? Is it painful? Is it a roller coaster ride? Is it stressful? Absolutely. But but in our opinion, and, and if you're able to ride it out and you can de- uh, develop these guys the right way and, and you've got guys who are made of the right stuff like we feel like we have where they're going to grind and they're going to find ways to get things done, we really do think the potential of this team is is pretty cool, and it's going to be fun to watch these guys grow. Well, I got to be honest with you, Coach. Um, when I ran into Sauce Gardner at the Combine, um, it was in the NFL Network suite where they were taking still photographs and uh, having them have video videos of them walking through a, like a confetti machine that we would use that video going to break of our broadcast, and 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 the top prospects were brought through. I ran into Sauce Gardner. I saw the Sauce chain. I said hello to him. I saw how big and tall and wide he is. And I just looked, saw the look in his eye of, of getting it without, you know, feeling too big on his own britches. And he had me at hello. I said, I walked out. I'm like, that's, that's, that's the guy the Jets should take it fourth overall. I'm wondering what, what you thought of sauce at first sight coach. No, uh, all the same stuff you do. uh, uh, You just mentioned, he's got this, uh, I was explaining it to my wife last night, believe it or not. We're, uh, (laughs) we're watching, uh, uh, flight 2022 oh. uh, the last episode and we we're talking and and it was my dad too my dad was sitting in there and i said you know he's got this uh uh humility to him that comes with a tremendous amount of confidence that allows him to talk a lot of crap <laughs> you know so it's like it's a it's an amazing balance i, it's, I find it fascinating per- personally like he's the guys love him um he is not afraid to ask questions he is not afraid to to see bad stuff on tape where he's being corrected he's not afraid to learn uh, he's not afraid to to see guidance from veterans he's not afraid of coaching um he's not afraid of getting beat but at the same time if he locks you up you're going to hear about it and um you know he's got he's got such great balance to him and i i think uh I think I speak for everyone in that we're really excited to have him in the building. Well, I mean, I spoke to Luke Fickle about him before the draft, and I guess it, it, it's good to not have a fear about uh, getting beat because you haven't been beat <laughs> since high school. But, I mean, he, he talked about how he and his staff thought that Gardner wasn't ready to get in a game, um, that he was too young, too green to get in a game, and then injuries forced him in a game, and he had a pick six to win the game and help salt the game away. And he looked at his staff going, okay, I guess I was wrong about that. Uh, but he also refused to call him sauce until he was a pro. Do you call him sauce coach? You, you know, I know, uh, I think I call him AG. Okay. I, I call him whatever comes out of my mouth. I'm not, okay. uh, 
Um, but uh, but to be honest with you, you know, just just to, to echo what Coach Fickle talked about, you know, yes. I look at him, I'm like, God, he's got to get some more power. Uh, he's got to get strength in his lower half uh, just so he can absorb a, the what could potentially be a 24 game season. And it's you know, so there's there, it's a long season, it's different than than college. But at the same time, you watch him practice, and um, he's got a lot of similarities to DJ Reed, who we just signed in the in the sense that uh, he strains. In and out of his breaks, it's um, uh, very similar to the way DJ does. DJ plays every play like it's the last play of his life, and and this kid trains and and plays his butt off, and it's uh, and it's fun. Our entire corner room, uh, cor- that entire room has really turned into something cool. With, uh, obviously, Bryce Hall last year, he's, he he looks fantastic again. So it's it's a really cool room. It's um, it's gone from young to to veteran pretty quick, and it's. Uh, Again, I'm just really excited for that 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 entire room to grow. And I and I appreciate your your thoughts on humility and and the importance of that. And I feel the same way. But you mentioned Flight 2022, which is the documentary that the Jets have put together five parts on their YouTube page, looking at the last off season in a very hard knock style. Uh, I, I I think my favorite part about that is whoever does the voiceover work. Do you know who does the voiceover work for that uh, documentary? I, I don't coach? Know, he's got he's got an amazing radio voice. I thought he did a phenomenal job. Right here on the Rich Eisen show, Robert Sala. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm fishing. I, I you know, it's just, I'm, 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 I'm weak talent. You know, I'm just weak, weak, thin skin talent, coach. You know, but uh, it is, it is a fun watch. And the interesting part about that, Robert Sala here on the Rich Eisen show, I did not know that uh, Jermaine Johnson told Joe Douglas to trade up for him. But you were four and ten at the time where he said that. Like, where, where did he think you should be trading up for him? Coach, you, you know, um, I think all those guys are always gonna, um, you know, just trade up. I have no idea. I have no idea. But, <laughs> but, but it uh, it worked out. It worked out perfect, and it was uh, it was supposed to happen the way it was supposed to happen. So, so what was that moment like for you, where you already had a remarkable talent at the corner position that you know what you can do with that with uh, your side of the football? in terms of expertise previously being defense. Um, and then Garrett Wilson, who we'll get to in a second for the, your other Wilson, if you will. But the fact that you're sitting there and you can get Jermaine Johnson at the end of the first round and all it costs you is a, a second that you already had another second in your back pocket, very high for Friday night. Uh, I mean, that had to be something for you, Coach. No, it was, it was great because once we took Garrett, um, I looked over at Joe and I think it was a couple picks later. I said, hey uh, – how far does uh, Jermaine Johnson got to go for us to? It was just kind of a discussion between Joe and I, and um, right. Uh, and Joe Joe gave a number, and uh, I said, "All right." Didn't think he'd even get there. I think I think he said, May, "If he gets to 15, uh, we could start picking up the phone and uh, and shoot from 15 to 20, 26." Well, I forget what pick it was. Joe was relentless, just calling, 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 as it was documented. And uh, and Joe made it happen. I mean, Joe Joe on on draft day is pretty fun to watch. He's he's calm, he's collected, but he is relentless in pursuit to try to make sure he's getting all the information he needs to make the best selection possible. And uh, you know, it's uh, you you have to get lucky sometimes. And uh, and at least from our our view, with where we had Jermaine ranked uh, in our top ten, we we felt like we were pretty lucky. So Robert Sala, New York Jets head coach here on the Rich Eisen show. We all know it's a quarterback driven league. You know that better than uh, anybody. So tell me about your guy, year two. How different does he look right now, it's Zach Wilson? You know, he he look he looks a lot more he looks a lot com- more comfortable. He's, uh, you know, a, a year ago, at this time, if he made a mistake, he would give this long dissertation about how he saw a certain player doing something, and <laughs> and uh, you know, in our system, it's progression based. It's one two, one two three, let it go, and uh, um, you know, this year. You could just before Rob or uh, Michael Fleur could even talk to him, he's like, "I know," and he would point to where he should have went, or he points to what he could have done. And and the dissertation, he's, you know, there's there's an old there's there's a saying in football: uh, "See a little, see a lot; see a lot, see nothing." And we're getting him; he's getting from seeing a lot to seeing very little, and which is what you want him to see, because when you see little, you actually widen your vision, if that makes sense. But um, He's done a really nice job. He's a lot more comfortable in the offense, a lot more decisive. Um, 
he still has that tremendous arm talent. I love the fact that he went off schedule some and in, uh, in, during OTAs a lot more than he did a year ago. Because uh, off schedule, he is a he is an incredible talent when he does go off schedule, and um, you know he looks he looks good. He looks comfortable. He's more comfortable around his teammates. He's more comfortable in conversation. So it's it looks good. Just now he's just got pieced together. What does off schedule look like? What do you mean by that? Um, it looks like his pro day. <laughs> ha! Okay, that throw, the, the throw that you're referring to, yeah, that the throw? throw, the throw, the, the, the sidearm, the off platform, the. You know when he's when he's running. You know when he when you exit the pocket and um, you know he could just he can deliver the ball to certain spots like the 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 Tennessee game where he hit Keelan Cole and he hit Corey Davis when he was off schedule leaving the pocket and keeping his eyes downfield and uh, you know he's no one's going to question his talent and uh, his physical traits. It's uh, it's it's really uh, bringing that the physicality, the, the physical traits that he has and combining it with the mental part of the football game, which is the hardest part to learn, especially at quarterback. And um, we really, we're really hopeful that he takes a, um, takes a good step forward and, and being a, a good quality quarterback, uh, starting quarterback. And, and who knows, you know, who knows where he can take it. But um, I think I share the same, we all share the same thoughts as he does and that we think his sky's the limit. So um you know, just taking those steps one day at a time and, and seeing how far he can take it. And the conversation was Garrett Wilson was the most pro-ready uh, receiver with the, all due respect to Drake London. I mean, that was part of the conversation throughout the entire talent evaluation portion of our calendar. How does he look so far to you, Coach? You know, same same thing. You know, it's um, because we're so versatile at receiver and we have our receivers playing all three spots and, you know, the Z, the X, the F, and um, all for matchup purposes, it is a little bit, taxing on receivers in the system because you're you're not just lining up at the X and having to do the same thing over and over and over again. Now, Garrett is very, very smart, but um, it's still mentally it, it's heavy. And uh, he looks good. You see all the body control. You see all the juiciness with his lower half movement, his uh, burst in and out of breaks, the speed, the hands, the aggressive hands. He's, he's a very, very talented young man, and he's very smart. And... Um, same thing with him as he masters the one-on-one aspect of football, which is scheme. All those physical traits will come out, and um, and OTAs was a good step in that direction. How's Mackay Becton? Uh, for him, rehabbing uh, a, a knee tendon is similar to somebody rehabbing their quad muscle. So, I mean, how 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 is he doing? Do you think? Uh, big Big Beck is doing good. It was it was great to see him during mini camp. Mm-hmm. Um, he has no restrictions on his knee anymore, uh, which is awesome. Um, so it's just a matter of continuing to get, in, get get his body right and get his mind right and getting ready to play a football season. And uh, you know all, all the all the things that we know of Makai, he's he's freakishly athletic, he's freakishly big, um, and uh, he's got freak, he's got freakish freakish talent. You know, so he's we're really excited to get him back in the fold. And uh, and so these next forty days are are obviously big for him as they are for everybody else. Right. And then in terms of in terms of getting healthy, uh, your pass rush is also uh, potentially significantly upgraded if people can come back healthy. And that's the other aspect of this. You got to you got to have a quarterback who can win games and you got to go hunt quarterbacks who can beat you. So how does how does your pass rush look right now to you going into the summer? Well, what what stinks about the way we structured OTAs is there really wasn't much O line D line play going on. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you watch those guys through individual and all the different things that we're having them do, um, we're, we're excited about his potential. You know, uh, Jermaine Johnson, we're adding to the mix, but uh, people can't forget about Jacob Martin, who we picked up from Houston. Carl Lawson comes back, really expecting a nice year from Quinn and Williams and uh, John Franklin Meyer. So we've got, uh, on paper, what could be a pretty cool group, um, but uh, paper never won a championship. <laughs> And I'm looking at the piece of paper you were scheduled, and I'm I'm like, come on, man, what the hell? I mean, so so, um, what's your two cents on that, coach? Your schedule? I know I know I'm asking a coach that, and you can only control you control play them when you play them. But I mean, you're looking at this right here. I'm assuming you'd you'd, you'd like to have a, a nice easy open, but you join the AFC North, pretty much to start the season. Well- what, what, one thing I've learned is there, there's really never an easy opener in the NFL, and that's not coach speak. There's, right. I, I know to fans, it's like, oh, we should beat that team, or well, you know, like when when we played Tampa, you know, I think we we're double digit underdogs and we had them on on the brink. We beat Tennessee. Uh, you, you just never know 
when uh, when the schedule comes out, who which team is going to be great, which team is going to struggle. But at the end of the day, every team in the NFL, to me, is capable of winning on Sunday. That's why it's the greatest sport in, in, the, in the country. I mean, the parity every, from top to bottom, every team is capable of putting on a, a show on Sunday, and that's what makes it great. Coach, I really appreciate the time. Uh, how was Father's Day for you? You, you, you? you know, I we we finally moved into our house, so I was grinding on the garage trying to get trying to open up boxes, see where everything went, and and then I spent the afternoon behind the grill. So it was a heck of a day. Okay, <laughs> six kids, right? Is that what you're saying? Seven. Seven, Seven kids. Wow. <laughs> and so you just you just moved into your your home. I mean, didn't didn't your contractor know all gas, no brakes? Didn't you tell that to your contractor, coach? This, this, this one's been all gas. He's been phenomenal. <laughs> my my guy's company's name is Rock Solid. He does a heck of a job. Okay. He really does. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, hey, Coach, let's talk during training camp. Uh, really appreciate the time. Congrats on a huge spring and uh, look forward to seeing the fall. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank, thank you so much. You got it. That's uh, Robert Sala, head coach of the New York Jets, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. I should have used the word autumn. Not saying I'm looking forward to the fall. I don't want to jinx a damn thing. Okay? I am not of sound mind.